<clears throat> so the belief that all people who die by suicide, some might refer to it as committing suicide, that such people go to hell is is a um it's a a theory even a dogma held by the roman catholic church uh for many 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 years um other uh religious uh, sects have also followed suit and believe the same thing and um it is important uh to know that it is completely or oh, this way of thinking this way of teaching and preaching uh is completely without uh biblical support biblical support um throughout scripture if you read scripture and study scripture we've seen that there are saints uh who wish they had never been born we could see this in the story of job wish that they could never be born good story a good story for you to read and study and you know and review there were those in scripture like Elijah who asked God to let them die. We saw that Jonah um, did his best to bring about his death in telling people to cast him into the sea. The key thing for us to remember is that nowhere in Scripture is it ever said that those who die by suicide or commit suicide go to hell. There are verses that have been taken. They have been given their own interpretation. And then people have ran with it. I think, I think there are portions of scripture that may lead us to believe that perhaps Judas who did hang himself um, perhaps ended up in hell and 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 this is not because necessarily uh, because of him taking his life more over it's probably because of his rejection of the Messiah his rejection uh which led to a lot of remorse when we look at the verses um that are used uh or have been used there's a lot that has changed in the catholic church and among other uh christians um but when we look at verses like first corinthians chapter 3 verses 16 and 17 where it says do you not know that you are God's temple and that God's spirit dwells in you if anyone destroy God's temple God will destroy him for God's temple this is one of those portions of scripture that was used to to condemn those who either attempted suicide or died by suicide Ecclesiastes 7.17, do not, uh, be not overly wicked, neither be a fool. Why should you die before your time? First Corinthians 6, 19, 19 through 20, or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, whom you have from God, you are not your own, for you were bought at a price. So glorify God in your body. And so there are all these different por portions of scriptures that 
were taken by certain uh, individuals, um, and uh, they they ran with it, right? So this is what you're doing. You are you are attempting to take your life. So you are destroying the temple of God, and so you are going to hell. So if we go by that premise, if we go by that teaching then anything that anyone does to destroy the temple of God, whether it is uh, eating too much, eating too little, uh, drinking too much, or uh, smoking and, and, and doing drugs, um, misusing your body and not sleeping enough and partying all night, we can use any of those scenarios to say that you are destroying the temple of God. So if you want to look at it that way, then yeah, you know, um, we're pretty much all going to hell. Now, when you come from my background and, and, and my theology, where we don't really believe that hell was created for us, and yet some people will end up there simply because of rejection of God, um, then you have to question these things. You have to question these things. The other thing you have to question is to think, as you just saw in some of the, uh, with some of the individuals that I mentioned, that people who think about taking their lives are not believers are not the saints. That's another thing that you would have to then uh, bring clarity uh, to. The Bible is very clear that God is in total control. The Bible is also very clear uh, that there is a lot of suffering to be had. Things didn't work out as they should have at the beginning of time, at the beginning of the Bible. Rules and laws were broken. And consequences and repercussions have been paid and will continue to be paid. We basically live, as believers, we live our lives understanding that what we deserve, the punishment that we deserve is being withheld from us through God's mercy. And that we are being given something we don't deserve, which is grace through Christ Jesus. That we are in our corrupt ways, in our fallen nature, we still have the opportunity to know God, to worship God, to believe in God, for us Christians to believe in God through Christ Jesus. And that in believing in God with heart knowledge, not just head knowledge, oh, I know I believe in God, right? With no adherence to it, with no obedience to God, or to the word of God. Or then there is heart knowledge, right? That subconscious uh place where we believe in God almost instinctively, where we adhere and we do the best that we can day by day to adhere to God's calling, to God's commandments. Even though we fail, we continue to try to better ourselves. There's an urgency to try to do God's will here on earth in us. That's how you know. Some people ask me all the time, how do you know? There is an urgency in you to do the right thing, to live the right life. You may not be completely successful, but there is an urgency in you to want to do the right thing. That's how you know. It is not found in a sinner's prayer. It is not found in baptism. It is not found in any of the things that people try to use 
to cover up the fact that there has to be some sort of an internal change, right? You can show it externally through all those me, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, uh, types of scenarios, but if it doesn't happen on the inside, it's really worth nothing. You're lying to yourself. Do we know that the uh, body, that our bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit, that the Holy Spirit dwells within each and every one of us, no matter what our condition may be? When you look at these passages, if you look at them in a way to condemn anyone, then you must look at them in a way to condemn yourself. You can't look at a passage like this and then condemn one group of people or one individual and not condemn yourself. Scripture, as I've said, and many who have been with us here uh, for years will always remember that I have called the Bible the spiritual mirror. That when you look at the words in the Bible, it will show you how beautiful you are and can be. And it shows you how ugly you are and can be. There's no escaping it. And what we have throughout history is people taking verses uh, that justify how they behave and perhaps taking verses that will condemn how others behave and doing with them as they please. This is one of the biggest problems that has faced religion and continues to face religion even today. That is why we constantly here at Action in Christ, we constantly tell you to seek a personal relationship with God through Christ Jesus. Not to do as I do or to try to do go through. Yeah, there we have a structure for a service. We have structures just to keep things in order and to keep the idiots at bay. However, what we do is to try to get you to seek out the face of God, to seek that personal relationship with God. Human beings are not created to then destroy themselves. If anything, we are created to survive. We have heard the stories of people stuck up on mountains cutting off their own arms, these climbers cutting off their own arms and, and then tying a tourniquet and then doing everything they can to get down the mountain and making it down the mountain. We were created to survive, not to take our own lives. People do not usually uh, uh, attempt or die by suicide because they want to die, it is mostly because they want to stop the constant pain. Oh, oh, I heard my, oh, I heard our founder, uh, my dear mother, uh, asked to die many a times. She didn't want to. But the suffering was unbearable. And yet she continued to try to survive. Others in her position, and even in, 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 in less suffering, attempted or took their own lives. To say that people who take their own lives are going to hell is to not know scripture. To say that God would send someone who is suffering, someone with such pain and sorrow to the pits of hell is to say that 
you serve a little God, not an omniscient God, not an omnipotent God, not an omnipresent God, but a little God. I want each and every one of you to recognize that at the end of time, God will do what God pleases. That is why you must look at Exodus and you must look at Romans where it says that it is God who has mercy upon us. It is God who will save. That man actually has nothing to do with it but God. But God. I'll finish with John chapter 12, verse 25. Whoever loves his life loses it. And whoever hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. It is important that we learn to live our lives for something more and something greater than ourselves. If you're living your life and it's all about you and to hell with everybody else, you have already lost your life. You have already killed yourself. You have to find that place in your life where you reach out to God and you say, God, I am here. Do with me as you wish. And you will see that God will use you as a blessing to others. And you can do this right now. You don't have to have any type of certificate or any type of level, major level of training, simply by adhering and listening to the words that are coming out of my mouth right now. You can do this. You can become a minister. You can spread the good news, the hope of glory through Christ Jesus, right now, You're, if you wait to be perfect, if you wait to not be sick, if you wait to not be in bad condition financially, if you wait for any of that stuff to rectify itself before doing this, you will never do it. Try God, I say. Try God. You hear about the leap of faith and people will take that and, and misuse it all over the place. No, the leap of faith is try God. Right now, however you find yourself, make God the center of your life, the center of your family. Try God. That is the leap of faith. And as for those who have, for family members who have loved ones who have taken their lives, be the good news. Give them hope. Help them to understand that there is, that, that, that God is a big God. That God loves his creation. Oh, people that came up to me in the hospital and how could it be? She was always in church. He was always in church. He was a believer. She was a believer. How could they have done this? How could they have tried this? Because saints suffer too. You didn't hear me. Because followers of Jesus Christ suffer too. 
unbearable, sorrowable, unbearable pain, unbearable suffering. And sometimes you just want it to stop. Not a lack of faith, not a lack of belief in God. You simply want the suffering to end. I'll finish with this. For those who constantly and continuously want to send people to hell, may God have mercy on you. May God have mercy on your ministry. May God have mercy on your followers. I hope this helps. Let us pray. Almighty God, we come before you acknowledging that you are a great God. That sometimes we just can't understand how things work. But that should not stop us from continuing to follow you, from seeking your face. From, from from seeking a deeper relationship with you. May we never stop being merciful toward others, lest you be merciful toward us. May we never give up on compassion. May we never stop joining others in their suffering. For this and so much more, we pray. Amen. Amen. This message, as well as others and other content, can be found on our YouTube channel, Rev. Dr. Marcos Miranda. You can reach out to us at actioninchrist.gmail.com, and you can always donate. Uh, or get more information at our website, actioninchrist.com. With that said, may God bless each and every one of you. Uh, and please go ahead and show each other the sign of peace.